Hello students of grade 11. Welcome to our session on examination part one, questions and answer segment. In today's session, we'll be focused on two subject areas, principles of business and office administration. Before we begin, let us look at our session objectives for today. One, we will be examining the approaches to examination questions. Two, we will list the key words used in examinations. And three, we will explain the key words used in examinations. Let us begin. Answering examination questions. Like any other kind of written responses, answering essay test questions requires studying the question and practice before it becomes easier. Students often struggle with the exam questions. Thus, you are advised to acquire sample questions to practice on at every opportunity. Set a timer and practice. Short practice sessions will provide better results than a single long session. Give yourself plenty of time to prepare for this kind of writing under time pressure. Let us now look at the strategies to help you write better responses. One, read through the entire exam paper properly. Two, plan an overall strategy carefully at least two times. Three, examine each question to identify the request being made. Four, think about what kind of writing the key request calls for. Five, make notes of the points needed to cover the responses. Six, begin your response by echoing the question. Seven, be as brief as possible while stating the main points. Eight, examiners look forward to attention-grabbing answers. Nine, write down answers legibly and neatly. And number 10, give examples where necessary. My final advice under this segment is, leave 10 minutes at the end of the test to reread the questions and responses provided. Let us now look at the keywords that are listed in the examination questions. These words are describe, evaluate, define, reflect, Analyze, argue, generalize, discuss, compare, explain, and list. Oftentimes, we know that students get very mixed up when these kind of words are used. However, today, I will be giving you a synopsis and a description as to how to identify, recognize, and use each word correctly. Let us begin with describe. When we describe, we note physical and sometimes chronological details. Descriptions generally rely on sensory perceptions compared to analysis that typically gets at mental abstractions. Because vision is usually our dominant sense, most of our descriptions rely heavily on visual details. Being asked to describe means writing about what you've seen. Writing tip. Our field of vision takes in lots of details. Thus, we organize those details to help remember. As writers, our organizational pattern must be obvious to the readers. That is why, most descriptions follow a top to bottom or right to left program, etc. Sometimes the pattern is most to least important and this pattern works especially well if your description is building to a particular point. Depending on the situation in which you are asked to describe, 
you may want to organize the details of your writing according to a chronological pattern. Particularly when you are recording observation that takes place over a long time, you may want to capture the sense of passing time by using time markers. For example, first, later, finally, to organize the details in your writing. The substitute keywords for description or to describe are observe or notice. Now, let us turn our attention over to analyze. Analyze in a test question usually means to take this concept apart and look at the relationship among the parts. Sometimes the analysis focuses on cases and effects as, for example, writing about media coverage and election turnout. Sometimes the analysis will focus on a time sequence, that is, tracking the progress of a degenerated disease. In short, make clear not just the parts you're looking at, but why you're looking at them to give a response. Writing tip. Because we can look at relationships among parts in several different ways, be sure to signal to all the readers how you're slicing the pie. If you're writing about cause-effect relationships among parts, use key transitional words and phrases such as because and as a result. If the analysis is based on a process, use transitions that indicate an appropriate time or developmental sequence. If the analysis looks at functional relationships, clearly indicate the functions and their interactions. Substitute keywords for analyze are examine or scrutinize. Compare. Compare is probably the easiest of the key terms to recognize and respond to. Comparisons are also common on essay tests. So, practice. Compare basically asks the writer to take two or more objects, theories, events, concepts, applications or explanations and show their similarities. One warning though, when teachers use compare on a test question, they often mean contrast. So don't forget to point out differences after stating the similarities between items being compared. Writing tip. Depending on the length and complexity of the response, it may be easier to write everything about item A first and using the same sequence write about item B thereafter. If unsure, you can follow the same sequence in a block approach to comparison. Use a point-by-point -point method that allows a point about item A to be followed immediately by a point about item B. Students, use clear transitions whether adopting the block or point-by-point -point method so that readers can clearly identify the similarities or differences related to each item. Specific advice. The comparisons being focused on will be of theories or applications. Because theories are more general and applications are more specific, comparisons may have to deal with both the abstract, meaning theoretical level, and the concrete, specific client treatment. Practicing these complex comparisons will definitely make them easier to write. The key substitute words for compare are to distinguish between or among or to show the similarities and differences. Evaluate. Evaluate often gets misunderstood by students as compare. They are not the same. Comparing just points out similarities and differences. Evaluation requires a judgment about which theory application, approach, etc. is superior and why. Students working under time pressure are more likely to forget to write out their criteria for making the judgment. 
This rationale is often crucial for understanding the overall judgment. Writing tip. Especially when pressed for time, keep the criteria obvious and straightforward. If one approach is cheaper and faster, and those are the two criteria anyone would use to evaluate the approaches in question, then talk about what makes one cheaper and faster. Students, do not forget to also show what makes the alternative approaches more expensive and slower. Thoroughness counts when writing evaluations. Note, if the obvious criteria are not appropriate in a specific context, students, be sure to explain why adopting a not so obvious criteria for evaluating is an option. As long as you can justify the criteria chosen and the final judgment made, the goals of the essay question that calls for evaluation is being met. Substitute keywords are rank, order, justify your selection, explain your rationale for choosing same. What it means to argue. Argue is a key word asking the student specifically to take a position and defend it. The best arguments have a narrowly focused position statement reasons to support the overall position, and then evidence to support each reason. Students, if time is in your favor, examine other possible positions to support, again with evidence, stating why your position is better. Writing tip. Most students have little trouble stating their overall position. But in the heat of writing under pressure, students do often forget to give adequate evidence to support that position. Be sure to include not just general reasons why you hold the position, but also the evidence, the details, examples, analysis that supports the reasons. If a solid argument is thought of, like a frame of a house cannot hold up the roof, which is the overall position, state reasons for the position while providing substance, which are details that covers a solid position. Specific advice. Not all arguments need to take a long time to develop. If the need to justify a particular intervention arise, a few details and a reference to a potential theoretical framework will suffice. Substitute keywords are defend, take a stand or position, justify. Let us now look at explain. Explain, like analyze, often points out the direction of cause effect and process reasoning. But explaining isn't always limited to analysis. Like discuss, Explain sometimes appears in a test question when the teacher is asking you to write everything you know about a concept or when the teacher is focusing on a specific set of relationships. Treat explain then as a key word that calls for more exploration of the rest of the question to see if there is additional focus elsewhere in the question. Writing tip. Because explaining can include any of the strategies noted for analyzing, defining, or comparing, be prepared to use a combination of techniques as well as transitional devices to create coherence in these responses. And because explaining leads towards longer responses, be sure to make a list of key points to include before attempting the responses. Check your list for completeness of your response at the end of the test time. Substitute keywords are tell how and discuss. Define. Define is another of the more straightforward of the key terms. 
Typically, a teacher asking you to define a term is asking for a translation of a technical term into language anyone could understand. Defining a concept calls for more elaboration, but it still builds on strategies for definition. Writing tip. Standard definitions use a variety of strategies, including synonyms, antonyms, analogies, comparisons, and explanations of where a term came from or the context in which it is used. Students, if you've studied dictionary definitions for the terms, build on those. Teachers are usually interested in knowing that you understand key terms. So when they ask you to define a term, they sometimes also want you to show that you can apply it to a particular context. You can get a better sense of how long and detailed you should make the definitions based on the points allotted to the definitions and the number of words or concepts you are expected to define. Generalize. Sometimes, essay test questions are meant to gauge critical thinking. Generalize is one of those terms. When teachers ask students to generalize, they want to see you move from the particular to the general or from the concrete to the abstract. Writing tip. If you haven't already noted some specific details elsewhere in the test, you'll find it easier to generalize if you start with some details and work your way to a higher level of abstraction. Specific advice. Often you are asked to generalize from a theory to a particular person. Remember to use this technique. Substitute keyword is to draw conclusion. List. List suggests jotting down single words or phrases quickly without taking the time to describe or explain in any detail. If your teacher has made a point of asking for complete sentences on essay tests, be sure to ask if list means a short item list or an extended description list. List also often gets combined with other key words. List and explain, for instance, indicates that little time must be spent labeling the items, but elaboration on their importance or their relationships is required. Writing tip. If your teacher is saving you time by allowing you to list short item answers, consider using bullets to give a visual clue about how many items you have in your final list. Especially on handwriting tests, visual clarity becomes increasingly important to teachers as they read dozens of pages. Substitute keywords are to identify, note, label, reflect. Reflect does not appear often as a keyword on examination questions. But when it does, it typically asks for expressing how the ideas or applications studied have affected your personal point of view. Reflection is one of the more personal kinds of writing because it invites self-exploration. Of course, taking a personal perspective does not mean giving up connection to outside reality. The idea is to connect your take on the idea with what was heard in class, studied in the text, or practiced in the lab. Writing tip. Because reflection is more personal, do not try to write this response without using an I point of view. And do not forget to make explicit connections between your personal critical thinking and the idea or concept you have been thinking about. Echoing the question. If you echo the question, you are more likely to write a response that answers the question because the question will usually spark thinking along the right lines. For example, assume the test question asks, if the reaction had been present, 
What would we have observed? If you start your response with, if the reaction had been present, we would have observed, and the response continued, students, you are more likely to get right to descriptive details based on what you saw. Similarly, a test question such as, why would the key point you choose to be most effective? Calls for an answer that begins, this key point is the most effective because, and the response continues. The because sets you up immediately to get at the rationale behind your thinking. Many teachers prefer to have students write complete sentences when they answer essay questions on tests. So echoing the question gives you a head start on a complete sentence in your response. Students, good luck on your examination. My name is Ms. Nisha Bamfield, and thank you for paying apt attention to today's session.